Hello and welcome back to Introductory R for Economists. Uh, so last time we worked with variables, just some very simple variables, just like a single number uh, or a single character variable or a single factor. Uh, and today what we're going to be doing today in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking all those numbers and we're going to be putting them together in a nice little row of numbers called a vector. Vectors, of course, are sort of the building blocks of statistics and econometrics. Uh, most of the time, you're not just working with one number, you're working with a whole bunch of observations of numbers, right? Uh, if you only have one number, you're hardly doing statistics. Uh, you need a bunch of numbers. And so we're going to put those together in a vector. So what we're going to be doing is working with vectors in R. So the first thing we're going to be doing uh, is we're just going to create a vector. We're going to create a vector for ourselves. And something else that I'm going to do is I'm going to be commenting my code. Uh, so let's start by going over how we do that. Uh, so this is something that you should be doing. It's very good to comment your code, just sort of a little note about what exactly it is that your code does. This is very helpful uh, because it ensures that as you go and uh, you, if you look back at your code or somebody else reads your code, they know or you know what exactly it's supposed to do. So you don't get confused later on. So the way we can do this is with a hashtag. We put a hashtag and the same to create a vector. All right. Simple enough, this won't actually execute as code. It's just sort of there as a reminder to describe what we're doing. Uh, another helpful thing uh, with comments, if you have several lines of comments, like line one, line two, line three, and I want to make all of them a comment at once, I can just highlight them all, control shift C, and they will all be commented immediately, uh, or command shift C on a Mac. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and create our vector. We're going to do this with the C function, short for concatenate. Uh, which is just going to put them together. So I'm going to create a, a series of numbers, one, two, three, and to store it in our object A. Control enter to run that. Over here in the right, uh, we have our uh, A object. It's a, it's a, it's a vector. It's got three object, got three different objects in it. it goes to one, two, three, uh, and those numbers are of course one, two, and three. So what can we do with this vector? So now that we have our numbers all together, we might want to say look at them. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about next is how to look at the different parts of the vector. How do we get at them? So uh, we're going to be, we're going to do, be doing this with something, something called indexing. And indexing is something that shows up in, in a lot of different programming languages. It's basically just a way of finding how, I, how can I figure out what this particular element of this vector is. Right? A vector has different elements. The first element here is number is one. The second element is two. The third element is three. If I, now I know what those three elements are, but let's say I didn't know and I wanted to look at them. How would I look at the second element of A? I'm going to do that with indexing. So I'm going to find the second element of A. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to put A, and then I'm going to do these square brackets. All right. Now these square brackets tell R, all right, here's A. It's a vector. Right? It's got three different elements in it. And I want to look for one of those elements. Show me the second element of R. So if I run this, control enter, it should give me back a 2, right? because 2 is the second element of R. Simple enough, right? In the square brackets, I tell it what element I want. It will give me back that element. Uh, what if I want to change it? Right? Maybe, maybe I want to mess with my vector. Right? I, can, I can treat it just like the objects that I did last time. I can, well, if I, I want the second element of, of A to become something else, I can change the second element of A to 4. Maybe I want it to be 1, 4, 3. Okay? Now, just like last time, when I wanted to turn A into a 2, I said I, I used the arrow. Said, okay, take this A, take take two, shove it into A. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take the element, second element of A, I'm gonna shove a four into it. So the second element of A, I'm gonna shove a four right in there, control enter. So now my vector, of course, you can see over here is one, four, three. All right, so I've messed, I've created my element, I've messed with my element, I've looked at the second element. Let's see some other ways in which I can look at different elements of A. Uh, so I'm gonna use indexing again. So I'm gonna look at uh, some elements of A. So maybe instead of looking at the second element, I want to look at the first two elements. Well, if I want to do this, I'm just going to tell R, hey, I want to look at the first element and the second element. How can I do this? Well, there's a couple different ways. One uh, is I can uh, say, well, I'm going to use my index, and I'm going to say one to two. Show me the first to second elements of A. If I do that, it'll give me back one and four, because of course one and four are the first two elements of A. Uh, I can also use a vector to tell A where to look. Just like I can nest a vector inside of this and tell it where to look. So, you know, what if I say, you know, create this vector. I just do C, 1, 2. That'll give me back a vector that's 1 and 2. That'll tell R, hey, I want to look at the first element and the second element, 1 and 2. So what if I take this vector that I just created and I stick it inside the index? What's going to happen? 
it's going to show me the first and second elements of A, 1 and 4. Simple as that. Uh, I can also use a true-false set of vectors. Instead of telling it I want to look at the first element and the second element, I can say, okay, well, what about this vector? Okay, I'm going to create a vector, say C, true, true, false. That's a vector, right? It's a vector of, of, of what are called binary variables or Boolean variables. Um, and so this is going to say, hey, do I want to look at the first one? Yes, true. Do I want to look at the second one? Yes, true. Do I want to look at the third one? No, false. So if I take this vector and I plug it in to my index here, it will again give me the first two elements, 1 and 4. There we go. Now the fact that we can plug vectors in here lets us get a little bit fancy. We can do some good stuff, and this is going to end up being very useful when we start doing more complex searches on more complex forms of data. So, for example, what if I want to look at all the parts of A that are less than 4? Okay, less than 4. How can I do that? Well, first, let me create a vector that finds which ones are less than 4. What if I just type in here, A is less than and four. What's this going to give me back? Well, it's going to say, okay, well, here's a vector A. Show me the parts of A that are less than four. Specifically, it's going to say, is the first element yes, less than four? Yeah, it's one. It's less than four. That's true. True. Is it less than four? Yes, true. Is the second element less than four? No, it is four. So false. That one's not less than four. The third one, that's a three. That's less than four. So true again. So it should give me false, or sorry, should give me true, false, true. True, false, true. Now, what happened last time we put a true, a, 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 a true, true, false in there? It gave us the first one and the second one, because those are the trues. And it didn't give me the third one, because that was the false. Let's do that here. Let's take this a is less than 4, and let's plug it into our index. So I'm going to take a is less than 4. I'm going to plug it into the index. This should give me back 1 and 3. There it is, 1 and 3. OK? So I'm building, an ind I'm building a, a, a vector that tells me where I want to look. Either it's telling me I want to look at the first and the second one, or it's telling me I want to look at uh, the first, the, this one, yes, the second one, no, uh, yes, the third one, no. Or it could say, give me all the ones that it's less than four. Okay? I can even do some crazy stuff with it. What if I want it to give me the second one three times in a row? Well, I can say A, and then I'm going to create a vector 2, 2, 2. Give me the second one, then give me the second one again, then give me the second one a third time. If I run that one, 4, 4, 4, right? I'm giving it a vector that tells it where to look. I'm either, either I'm giving it a number that tells it what position to look in, or I'm giving it a vector of trues and falses that tell it which ones to show me and which ones not to show me. Right? Good so far. All right, so we have our vector. Uh, now, most of the time, we're working with more than one vector. We're working with like a, a matrix uh, or like a spreadsheet type thing where we have sort of a rectangle of numbers most of the time. So let's do that. So let's create ourselves a second vector, and let's put it together with our first one in a, in a matrix. Uh, so we're going to create a second vector. We're going to call it B, and that B is going to be, let's just say, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so now we have B. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put them together uh, in a nice little rectangle in what is specifically a matrix. Now we're not going to be using matrices most of the time. We're going to be using something called data frames, which are basically matrices with some extra bells and whistles attached. But matrix is a good place to start. So we're going to create a matrix. Um, and we're going to do it with the function cbind. So cbind is short for column bind. Uh, we're going to basically take A, we're going to treat it like a column of data, like you would have a column in an Excel spreadsheet. We're going to take B, we're going to treat it like another column, right? So we got these vector, 1, 4, 3. We got this vector, 4, 5, 6. Boom, stick them right next to each other, make a matrix. We're going to do that with cbind. So let's call our matrix um, X, why not? So we're going to create, we're going to do cbind with A and B. We're going to stick them together and store it in X. I'm going to do that. Over here you can see I've got this matrix. It's got three rows, right? This first number here is talking about the rows that it has. It's got two columns, uh, A and B, and that's, that's the, the second number is talking about the columns it has. If I click on it, I can see it right here, right? It's giving me that rectangle of numbers. looks just like an Excel spreadsheet, right? Good so far. Now we can use the same tricks that we've done with indexing to look at the different parts of the matrix of X. So let's look at parts of x. So first of all, uh, let's just look at a particular number. So let's look at, say, the, uh, the third element of the second row. Now, that, like I said before, with the x's, uh, the first, I mean, we're, now, now we have a matrix, so we don't just have to know what position it's in. We have to know what position it's in in two different directions. What row is it in and what column is it in? The first number we're going to put in is the row. The second number we're going to put in is the column. 
So let's look at, say, the third row in the second column. If I do that, it's going to give me 6. If I look back at x, that is, of course, the third row and the second column is the 6. It's exactly what we want. Great. Uh, now, uh, we can you know, do the same sorts of things that we did last time with, looking at, with using a vector to look at parts of the matrix. Let's say that I want to look at just the rows of the matrix that are, where A is less than 4. Now this is the kind of thing that you're going to do all the time when you're working with actual data. So for example, you might have a data set of people and you want to say, Tell, show me all the people where the income is higher than $100,000 a year. Or you have a data set of countries. Show me all the countries that are in Europe. Right? That sort of thing. So let's do that here. Let's use our indexing skills to select just a part of this matrix. Okay? Uh, so we want to choose a particular subset of the rows. And we're going to do this with a vector, just like we did last time. Okay? Uh, so I want to get a vector that tells me, hey, which, which rows have a value of A that's less than 4? Okay? Uh, so first of all, let's figure out what, part, what that is. So we're going to get just the rows where A is less than 4. Great. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create that vector that's going to, of trues and falses that's going to tell me where to look, tell R where to look. So I can do that by saying, okay, x comma 1. Now what's this doing? So I have x, I'm looking in it, I put nothing in the first number. That's telling R, give me all the rows, okay? And then in the second number I put 1, that's telling me, giving me the first column, which of course was A, right? So if I just do this, x blank comma 1, this will give me back my a, 1, 4, 3, which is what we had before, right? Now I want to create a vector of trues and falses, so I'm going to say, hey, x, square bracket, comma, 1, and square bracket, is that less than 4? This will be just like we did it before, it should give, me, should give me true, false, true. There we go, okay? Now I want to look for just those rows, right? So I'm going to create another x index, I'm going to take this vector, of trues and falses right here. I'm going to stick that in my rows part. So that's going, to that's going to look for just the rows where it's got the true. Okay? And then comma, I'm going to leave the next part blank because I want all the columns where that's true. If I do this, it gives me just the rows uh, where, the, where the first row of x is less than 4, where the a is less than 4, right? Uh, it gives me a 1, 4 up top. It gives me a 3, 6 down at the bottom, which is exactly what we want, right? This first row is a less than 4. Yep, so it gives me this, the 1 and the 4. This second row is a less than 4. Nope, so we skip that one. The third row is a less than 4. Yep, it's 3. So we get back to 3 and the 6, and those two rows are exactly what we get right here. All right, so what we've gone over in this video, uh, we talked about how to build a vector with the C function. Uh, we talked about how to look for pieces within that vector. Right? We talked about indexing. I can look for a particular number uh, within that vector, or I can use a series of trues and falses to tell me, hey, which ones do you want me to give you back? True, give it back to me. False, don't. I can stick a vector inside another vector to, to, to help me figure it out. Right? I had that true, false, true. That was a vector in itself. And I put that in the indexing part of A, and it gave me back exactly what I wanted. I could take multiple vectors and stick them together in a matrix using C bind. Uh, and once I have that matrix, I can use indexing in the exact same way that I did with a vector. The first number is the rows, the second number is the columns. I can put in a particular number in each and give me, it'll give me back whatever row and whatever column that is. Or I can use a vector, like I did here, where I said, hey, uh, I, want all the, I want all the rows where the, uh, where, where the first row is, where the first column is less than four. And I said, okay, here's the first column, is it less than four? True, false, true. I took that true, false, true, I stuck it in the rows part of the index, and it gave me back the rows where A is less than 4. Yeah, I recommend playing around with this a little, little bit. The code for this is available. Uh, in, there's a link in the description. So go ahead and check it out. Play around with it. Just see if you can find out how to access different parts of a matrix. The more you do this, the more you're going to be used to it, and the more comfortable you're going to be working with data and matrices in R, which is going to be handy when you start working with more complex stuff. So give it a go. Uh, don't just watch these videos. It's always helpful if you sort of go along with them and try things out. Because, uh, you know, there's nothing better than muscle memories. You might as well get some of that in you while you can. All right. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.